there he goes. It's just today. Scoring goals against Lions on the pitch last night, bro. Yeah. Red Army. Morning, everybody. We have a very creased order outfit this morning. We're starting with a little bit of ironing, and yes. Oh, this is pink, this is pink, and this pink. I'm going all pink today in memory of uh, UK media trolling day. Oh, <laughs> eldest. It needs to be done on a one. That was a three. Answer to yesterday's question, what is smash factor? Basically, it's a term used for efficiency, really. It's Trapman's term. Ball speed divided by club head speed, and it gives you a ratio, so it gives you an idea of how efficient a club is or not, or how efficient the player's strike is or not. So today's question to celebrate my pink outfit is what are some of the silliest dress rules in golf? Tell me what you encountered as some of the silliest rules in golf when it comes to clothes. Hit that comment section up down there. Remember to hit the thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button also while you're down there. If you hit that little bell icon once you've subscribed it'll make sure you get notifications every time I post. Here he is. All right. Oh, is that an epic in there? Free wood. Is that the slidey? Everyone wants to see the lucky day sliding. Oh. I can't do it. <laughs> Stop it. Right, today's swing is an interesting one. We've got a right hand grip issue, which we're not going to talk about today because there's loads of lessons on that. I can't work out if this driver is really long in his hands. I just can't see. It just looks massive. So as we go up to the top, look how long that kid goes. Now I can't work out if he's long driving, if... We're going to talk about long swings basically today and we'll give this guy some ideas. I don't know if this is him trying to play just for distance or that is how he actually swings the club. But look, let's talk about long swings. There's Raymondo over there. Heading up onto the range after the drive. There's Matthew striping them away and young Dan's joining us. Head pro at Stad Knights. Hello Dan. Hello Mark. How you doing yeah, mate? Good, thanks. I'm ready for it. He's ready. Ready. <laughs> It'll change his tune. <laughs> right, first idea is I want you to practice. Now bear in mind, I don't mind that you overswing. If you hit great shots and you control the direction, keep swinging the way you're swinging. But if you want to think about maybe controlling strike, which then in turn might help you control a bit of direction through face, uh, face to path control as well. Here's some ideas. So you're turning very much this way which allows me to swing the club back wherever I want to go. So as soon as my upper body starts turning aggressively back towards that target, I can send that club wherever I want it to go. Giving it a bit of the old kind of Joe Millers. So great drill, just put the club on your shoulders and I want you to try and turn the butt end of the club down to where the ball would be and stop. Just feel what size of turn you're doing. Feel how your body isn't going back towards the target. You need to be able to create these ideas when you're out on the course. Try and feel these kind of body movements when you're practicing. So if we do it the way you want to do it, so the club starts pointing up and out into the distance and much further away from where that ball would be. You can do this at home on the carpet. You can do it obviously before you hit a shot if you wanted to, certainly on a range. It'll give you a, an idea of a pretty decent shoulder turn, but one that might just help you control how crazily long that club is going back. Let's answer your questions. Got a question for you. On putting, I bought a device for my putter that tells me that I deliver um, the face slightly open to where it sits at impact. And I'm curious as to uh, why this happens. I notice it much more on shorter putts. Also curious if my um, putter has something to do with this since it's heel weighted. Uh, I appreciate the uh, feedback and the vlogs, bruh. Shout out to DJ Ola. Right, first thing. Uh, so guys, his putt I saying is pointing right on this device he's using. So the first thing I would question is the device to start you off. Home devices, how accurate they are, you've got to be careful. If you're missing putts to the right, then it might correlate. I mean, I see home devices use, what do you think guys? I mean, compared to like a Sam or something. Oh yeah, very basic. Info. One degree, you know, because yeah, how, you know, is that putter on, is that device on the putter straight enough is one of the big questions. So that's the first thing I would question. Second thing, if you want to get the putter head to um, work differently, we did something with Matt where we changed his grip and it got your deviation on putter rotation of the face. Two degrees variations of under, under a degree, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. And what do we do for you? If you show us the grip that we use for you. I am 
over air grip now, so thumbs next to each other, thing, fingers down the shirt grip. Yeah. And just however this feels comfortable with. Absolutely, yeah. So changing his grip changed the way he controlled the club face. So obviously that's not saying that the prayer grip makes your club face control better, but it did for him. And it's those kind of things. You find that, Paul, with students? You've just got to kind of experiment a bit with them. Dan. Dan, sorry, Dan. <laughs> yeah, you do. You That's do. Dan. Yeah. Have a little play around. Have a little play around with uh, different grips. That will yeah. obviously help a little bit. Uh, we're all slightly different, so yeah. it's a feel thing more than more so than anything else. Absolutely. Um, but also check your grip. Yeah, yeah. You know, the actual grip on the putter as well. Yeah? Okay. Make sure that's right. So yeah, yeah. Sort of, uh... Another thing I would do as well, you've got to remember that, so where I put the ball in my stance for putting, how far forward, back or centre I have it, affects at what point of the arc of my stroke I deliver the face. So I tend to deliver my face most at zero, believe it or not, from the middle of my stance, but my path tends to go left and I tend to hit it a bit out of the toe. So I actually putt better with the ball forward in my stance because it counteracts those two things. So another thing would be playing with ball position. Maybe if you've got it in the middle, just push it slightly further forward. You might catch that ball on a slight, uh, later part of that club rotating, which might fix that putt up, that one degree that you're measuring. The, the main thing I would do is rest. I wouldn't measure on that device, not knowing it, but I'm pretty sure it's a home consumer one, and take that as gospel. Maybe do some gate drills. So put two tee pegs out in front of you, like two inches, three inches in front of the ball, and get the ball to start through that gate. Because you might be, if you're getting the ball to start through that gate, and that device is measuring you as one degree open, to whatever, say target line, it's irrelevant if it starts through that gate. Um, so just a few things there to practice. Thanks for the question. I didn't realise Wayne <laughs> Riley was playing. <laughs> oh, they all flipped over and squeezed it. <laughs> <laughs> just finished that was a lot of fun video coming soon I look so good in my pink outfit right next idea I want you to practice and I do this a lot with students who do benefit from making smaller movements over bigger movements again we're not saying no lot over swings are bad I'm just you know this guy's giving me nothing apart from this video it gives you an ideas on what to do if this is something you struggle from and you don't strike the ball that well so I get them to get like an eight iron and I do a game with them so how far can we hit this eight iron with how small a swing and obviously I'm using a launch monitor so we can measure measure the difference from what they feel to what actually happens down at impact. So I do one game, I try and feel like there's no wrist hinge, so I just extend, I call it like a wooden man swing. How far can I extend and extend through and get distance out of an eight iron? So my eight iron is 150 yards, say. Um, this is a seven iron actually, so 160 yards. How close can I get to that 160 yards making that swing? This is a great thing for you to do at the range, get a target where you normally hit your seven iron and see how close you can get to it while making swings that feel very short not letting the club go over your back, really feeling like you're just pushing it away. You will be amazed if you measure that. So get on a launch monitor if you can, but if you can't, just video it, get home, note how far you were hitting each one of those shots, and then relate that to the swing that you see on that video, that on that phone that you've got. You'll be amazed how far they go. And often for these golfers, they feel like they're not hitting it powerfully enough, but the strike center off, their efficiency improves, direction improves, and they just accept that as a way to go forwards. There we go, thanks for watching. Coach is driving, I'm editing, Dan is chilling. <laughs> You'll see Dan next week in the video. New guy who's playing in some, hopefully, a few more of the videos if he's not had enough <laughs> from today's experience. <laughs> see you all tomorrow. Remember to thumbs up the video, is always a good idea, Coach. Yeah, and uh, subscribe button. Yeah, that red one. Click it, and then that little bell notification thing. Ding, ding, ding. Every time I post, you get a lovely little notification. Uh, I've had an email from today's golfer. <laughs> <laughs>